Hello everyone and welcome to possibly the muddiest badminton in history and subsequently the worst outfit choice. So let's dive in. So we have made it to Fairfax and Favour, who I would say kindly invited me here. However, stomping through this mud, I'm not so sure. Thankfully, I have got my trusty Boudicca's on, which are actually coping incredibly well, even with the bare legs and white skirt combo. So we're going to be having a little look inside the Fairfax and Favour tent. They've got some exciting new products out to celebrate their 10 year anniversary, which I'm Amazingly, they're celebrating here at Badminton. We're also going to catch up with one of the five star riders, follow their cross country round, and hopefully talk to them after they've completed this enormous track in rather testing conditions. But firstly, let's head inside and see the wonders of the Fairfax and Favour tent because they've got some rather exciting stuff in there. Some absolutely gorgeous pieces in their special 10 year anniversary collection there but I thought I would show you through what I'm wearing we won't focus too much on the boots guys because they are covered in mud but they are the Boudicca's as I mentioned earlier I've also got the kitty lightweight jacket on as well as my Windsor tote in navy and my molten belt in black so it is now cross country day we did catch a little bit of the dressage action yesterday Kitty King is in the lead going into cross country. She scored an amazing 22.1 literally don't know how they do that at five star but before the cross country gets going we are going to catch up with another Fairfax and Favour ambassador Bubby Upton who kindly walked the course with me yesterday she's going to talk us through some of the more influential combinations on course as well as tell us how she was feeling and how she prepares the night before she goes around that enormous five star track A rail bounce down to a big step, so don't even have one stride before the step, and then four really forward strides up to the skinny out. So obviously we don't know how they're gonna jump down the step. I have an idea that mine's not gonna jump off very big at all. He likes to kind of slither down, which is great because then it means I can land in balance and then ride up to the step, as opposed to him launching off the step and me having no kind of control over the first two, two strides. So that's kind of quite handy that. Um, but yeah, it's like I said, they've got to be super, super brave then and they've suddenly got to be really, really quick and nimble with their legs through here. And it will happen so fast that the ground goes away at the step and then up a really steep slope to the brush. So got to get them really back for the rail. And then as soon as you jump down the step, press on up to the, to the hedge. So it tests all kind of sensors in the horse. So but yeah, you'll see the other side, how big the step is. So here we are approaching minute five. So we're nearly halfway, not quite. They've luckily just had a downhill um, slope down from the top lake where they've had a big climb up to the lake, which is really tough up at the top. And then a nice downhill stretch to that ditch and log there. So hopefully they'll have kind of their, got their puff back and stuff like that because this is a really big effort for them here. So got a very big step in front, as you can see, and then a little owl hole to then a big drop away on landing, which you probably saw as you walked past. So it's a really interesting question because um, they're going to be really probably backing off it quite a bit with the owl hole. You need to ride with a lot of canter because it's a huge step, but then you also need to give them enough time to read the question at hand. Um, I mean, I've never done anything like this before. We don't see it ever. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they 
see how they jump it. And I think it's a real kind of test of the partnership that you have with, with your horse, for sure. I'm here with the amazing Bubby Upton. We've just finished a segment of the course walk. Can't do the whole thing because it's so long. But we've ended up at the lake. Is this going to be as influential as other years, do you think? Yeah, so this is now fence number 21. Last year it was very early on, so it's a completely different test for our horses this year. We're on really tired horses. We have an enormous frangible pin <laughs> coming into the lake. Whereas last year we had a nice big log, so obviously there was no kind of, no horse was being uh, punished for leaving kind of a hind limb on the, on the log coming in. So it'll be really interesting to see how it rides. Hopefully it will, uh, you know, fortune will favor the brave. And we just hope that my horse Cola is brave and jumps in as I plan and then kick on for the, for the corner in the middle. Absolutely. It's really interesting what you were saying about the pins because I wouldn't have thought about that, but you're right. Sometimes they do kind of slither into the water, don't they? And yeah. that is, so is this like a downward impact is what's going to set that off? Yeah. So this is a red pin. So this will be if you, if the force down is too great, it will drop. And my horse is relatively careful jumping into water. He's not one that would jump really far out. So I have to be very aware of that when I'm jumping in and probably put a little bit of extra pressure on takeoff to make sure he jumps out over it and doesn't like kind of leave his back legs on the on the log um, coming in. Because that's the last thing that we want is an annoying pin this late on when they've been so good for the rest of the course, hopefully. So yeah, I've got to be ready for that. And, just tell him come on you've got to jump out and be brave and then be ready to then pick them up it's very deep water in here to the corner so you've got to get ready to have their head and then ride forward at the corner in the middle gosh there is so much to think about yeah now you were saying tomorrow morning you're going to do a final course walk yeah but what about this evening how do you prepare do you take your mind off of it do you visualize it so no after i finish walking the course this evening i'll just switch That's off that yeah i'll probably analyze my dressage test with my trainer who's here go through that learn from that then put that to bed and then i've got my family here which is a really nice distraction just have a normal evening and then wake up in the morning come and walk it and get ready to hopefully nail it then off you go <laughs> well we're yeah. wishing you the best of luck thank the course you. walk was amazing thank you so much and yeah we'll be rooting Pleasure. for you and cola tomorrow thank you <laughs> We have trekked through the mud to Smart Grooming because I wanted to show you some of the essentials that I used for both of the grey girls at badminton. And we've actually started with the cleaning area. So the purple shampoo was an absolute godsend as well as this magical little blue powder which is designed to like offset the stains on a grey and make them look like white rather than yellow. It's the first time I'd used this and it was absolutely fab. You dilute it with your water and then wash them down with it. Fantastic. We've got all kinds of shampoos and everything. My ponies were chalked within an inch of their life. Again, I did the same thing. I did with the powder. I put this in with my water, sponged them off with it, and then gave them a good brush afterwards. Let's pop that back. And they were looking absolutely immaculate. I actually had comments when I was in front of the house saying, how is your grey horse still so clean? I was like... It is smart grooming, my friends. So we've got clipping things over there, but the next place to visit, oh, we can go down here. We've got all of our detanglers and coat shine, gloss and go to make them look super glossy. I know mine are gray, but they have black points. So I use this on their legs and like their noses and anywhere where they're slightly darker, just to make them look nice and shiny. And then of course, the plaiting, the plaiting stuff. So. If you are without plaiting wax, you are making your job so much harder. Honestly, this little plaiting wax, it actually lasts a surprisingly long time. I think I bought my last one at Badminton last year, and it's lasted me right the way through to this year when I got another new one. Just gets rid of all of those little wispies and makes the hair a lot easier to hold. You can also just like really ram it on um, and then obviously the plaiting gel you've got to get that all over the mane make sure your plaits are staying in place there are various oh, there we go perfect plaits just spray that all the way up once you're done and a new thing i used at badders which i don't know if we actually filmed 
These are, oh, we did, Pete's nodding, we did film it. The stitch on pickers. I've always done it with scissors and chopped off parts of the poor pony's mane. One of these makes it so much easier to take your plaits out. We've obviously got the needles and our aprons. So much here, various threads, but the smart grooming products are absolutely fantastic. You cannot be without them if you are wanting to take your turnout to the next level. So before we head out on the cross country course to see how it's jumping, we were sucked in by some food. So we've got a delicious loaded fry tub of food here. We're gonna tuck in guys and you're gonna get a very special badminton pizza. What's in the menu today and how he will rate it? Pizza, what has his life come to let's see it's pizza. So we've actually snuck behind the Voltaire design stand. And uh, this is meant to be a sharing portion, guys, but this is where I get done dirty. And Pete absolutely stuffs his face and eats all the good bits before I get a chance, because I'm now camera woman. Right, Peter elegantly straddling the um, Voltaire design <laughs> saddle horse there. This is going to be our fanciest pizza seats ever, I think. Yeah, Can you talk us through what we have just devoured? It was a sweet pulled pork loaded fries. Oh, so good. The little, the slaw, the, the slaw sauce, the slaw. Nice and sweet. A bit, a bit quite rich, but not mm. too much. Rich, Mitch, I can't even speak. Quite rich, but not too Mitch, that Mitch. was, guys. Um, do we have a score? We do. I'm going to go. Freddie's not going to like this, I don't think. He said I was too high yesterday. Oh, OK. Um, I'm going to go 8-3 for that one. 8.3! Oh, yeah. I just think that's quite mean. I thoroughly enjoyed that, but potentially it's because I've survived on mints up until this point. It's now 12.30. Yeah, that was my breakfast as well. That was, yeah, that was our breakfast. Anyway, we are going to head out on course. Oh, my God. idea that mine's not going to jump off very big at all, we like to kind of slither down. It's a real kind of test of the partnership that you have with, with your horse, for sure.
Bobby Upton, you have just flown round clear. How are you feeling? I'm just so proud of him. He's an unbelievable horse. Um, I kind of robbed him of that last year. Um, so I'm just so delighted that he was able to show everyone what a class act he is. He showed it at Burley and he's shown it again here today. It was so, so tough out there. Honestly, the ground was, it was very gloopy and he just dug so deep. There were a couple of moments which weren't quite how I wanted them. They were a little bit, you know, they were pretty hairy. Um, but he could have very easily given up on me. And for me, that's where the love for my horses and the work we put in every single day prevails above all and I'm just so proud of him. Wow, truly inspiring. I mean, we watched you down by the owl hole. You looked like you absolutely <laughs> rode for your life, but it, it looked amazing. How did that actually ride? Yeah, the owl hole, he was so clever. He's an unbelievably intelligent horse. Obviously, we're training like really hard for everything that we possibly can, but that you cannot train for. So that's just pure trust. Um, when he can't even see where he's landing, it was a huge step up. I took my time on the turn made sure I got a good shot up and then I literally was like come on boy and he was yeah he was amazing I to be honest there are not many other horses I'd want to be sat on today he was incredible oh that's lovely to hear well best of luck for show jumping tomorrow and well done that was absolutely incredible you really deserve it thank you very much <laughs>inspiration Bubby Upton is we will of course be cheering her on for the show jumping tomorrow fingers crossed she can get herself a top 10 placing because I believe she is still inside the top 10 after her cracking cross-country round so we have headed back to the Fairfax and Favour tent I'm enjoying one of their delicious coronation fizzes a massive massive thank you to Fairfax and Favour for kindly inviting me to badminton to enjoy the weekend's affairs a big thank you for watching guys i'm going to do a little bit more shopping so i'll be over and out now i live love love you and i'll see you very soon